Hey friends, it's Sam and we are about to go on a journey and a half in this video, so buckle up. So here's like the Sparknotes version of what's going to happen in this video. Long story short, I really wanted to just take it easy and do a really simple DIY, easy wood accent wall in our bedroom to kind of break up how hectic a lot of these home renovation projects have been. However, I realized that I wasn't able to like actually show you this accent wall in context without also showing the beginning stages of our DIY main bedroom makeover. So we're just gonna get the best of both worlds in this video. So today we are going to start with my bedroom makeovers. You can kind of see the transformation that's happened so far in there because look, I'm doing a thousand projects at once and I'm kind of bouncing around all over the place and trying to find bits and pieces of hours and minutes to sneak in in between my full-time job and creating content. And a lot of that has meant that I've gotten little things done here and there in our bedroom. So I'm gonna be showing you the beginning stages of that and then we're gonna be jumping on into this DIY wooden accent wall because I think it looks pretty cool. So that being said, I'm really excited to show you the progress on our bedroom as well as the accent wall that I created today. And yeah, that's all I got. So let's get started. This project is sponsored by my awesome friends at Wagner. All right, so we are gonna jump on into this project where I promised we'd jump on into this project and that is with what this room looked like when we moved into this house. So because I want the primary focus of this video to be the accent wall, there are a couple things I'm gonna be glossing over in this video that I will circle back to in the next bedroom makeover video, which honestly, I don't know when I'm gonna be able to post that, but whatever, we'll get there when we get there. Um, number one is that I removed a glass block window, which was what was covered by that black material on the back wall. It just wasn't something that we love to have in the bedroom and when it was installed, it was not installed properly anyway, so it did have to go. And the other thing that happened in this room was that I ended up adding a closet, but I definitely will tackle that in the next bedroom makeover video. Where we can start though in this video is with something super fun, which was removing the molding on the wall because I wanted to take these laminate floors out because underneath these laminate floors are the original hardwood floors from the 1950s. So this is a little bit of a theme that you will see throughout all of the projects that are gonna be on my channel pretty soon because we're gonna be tackling essentially the entire first floor by the end of the year on my channel. But the entire first floor had these floating laminate floors covering the original hardwood floors, which ended up being in absolute amazing condition and I got them refinished. All right, just found out some cool news. I hope this lab mic works, it's so echoey in here. Just found out some cool news, the flooring guy just texted me yesterday and said he wants to come tomorrow to refinish the floors in the entire house. Oh, well, the first floor, which means that this bedroom is included. So before he can come though, I have to do tons of prep work, which means I have to take all of the base molding off of the floor so you can get the sander like as close to the wall as possible and clear out the, oh my gosh, brain fart. I almost said fart brain, <laughs> brain fart. Radiator cover's gotta go as well, but I think I'm gonna replace this. So I'm just gonna get rid of it. But yeah, so I'm gonna start by removing all the baseboards in here and then we'll do some movie magic. And then next time you see the space, the floors will be gorgeous. So cool, 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 cool. cool. Let's get started. So spoiler alert, one downside to taking months and months and months on a project and working on it in small pieces is that you forget where transitions are. So as much as I wanted to do movie magic and show you what the floor looked like after it was refinished, I kind of forgot, but you'll get a peek in a little bit. I absolutely promise. All right, next time you and me see this room, the floors will be refinished. So stoked. So glossing over the fact that that transition was a total fail, let's talk about where we are now. So in my last video, last week, I showed how we removed the wall unit from this back wall and I replaced it with Mr. Cool AC and heating units. Now I, in this room in particular, did put that unit on the interior wall and unfortunately it couldn't be centered where I actually wanted it to be. So I'll have to do some magic to make that work later in this project, but not now. For now though, let's focus on the fact that once that AC unit was out, 
Dad and I worked on closing up this wall. He tackled the outside of the wall. I tackled the inside of the wall. And the reason I'm focusing so much energy on talking about this particular wall is because this is the wall where I am putting the accent wall. Now, while I do that really boring thing called drywall work, I wanna talk about my inspiration for this project. So as I was like scouring the internet for cool accent wall ideas, I kept coming across these really awesome modern plywood looking accent walls. I'm gonna link all of my inspiration for this project below this video so you can check them out. But I wanted to make my own little version of that in this space. And I feel like that's exactly what I made come to life. Before I could get started on the actual accent wall build though, here's your sneak peek at the beautiful floor. But I did want to just tape that up and make sure that it was covered. And once that was covered, I then sanded down any of the patches I made in the room and primed every single patch so that I didn't get any flashing once I painted. Now, in terms of the color choice for this room, I think that you're all gonna be pretty surprised because I ended up going with a very different color in this room than I have in my entire house, so get ready. Speaking of getting ready, in addition to covering things in the room that I didn't wanna get excess paint on, I also covered myself with a very fashionable coverall. Can't forget to accessorize either. My painter's tape belt always comes in handy because these things always come 17 sizes too big. Am I ready to do sketchy Breaking Bad related things in the RV? Maybe. Am I ready to paint a room? Also maybe. Spoiler alert, I'm definitely gonna paint a room. Let's go paint. <laughs> So in terms of painting, for the painting and finishing portions of this project, I use my Wagner Flexio 3500 paint sprayer. It's a flexible and lightweight sprayer that comes with two different nozzles, one for big surfaces like walls and ceilings, and the other for small projects like fine finishing, which was great because that meant I was able to use it for pretty much my entire project. Also, I did not need to thin any of the coatings that I used while using the sprayer, and I was able to paint without too much overspray, which made for seriously easy cleanup. Honestly, I always underestimate how much time a sprayer is going to save me when painting a room, but the reality is, is that I was able to paint this entire room in like 15 to 20 minutes tops. And once I was done spraying my room in this like delicious, gorgeous, moody, blackish blue color, I then took all of those coatings off of the ceiling and the floor, and then I was able to wash out my sprayer in about five minutes. Okay, we are in business. All right, it's really kind of gloomy out today, so the lighting in here isn't the greatest. Also, like my headache situation isn't the greatest either, but we are gonna power through because today is the first day of my summer buildcation where I just build my heart out for an entire summer and I share the content with you and I am just like not wasting this day. Like we're gonna get some work done in here. So as you can see, the room has been painted. It looks really good. And it's really weird because the rest of the house is very like bright and this is very different than that. But the more that I look at it, the more I really like it. And I can't wait to start getting some like decor elements in here because I'm really starting to see in my brain the way that this can look. And I think it's gonna look really cool. But I won't get ahead of myself one step at a time. First step today is getting some plywood on the walls. So I don't green plywood. This is actually just a foam board piece of insulation. I'm gonna use this on the floor as a backer board for cutting the very lucrative and very hard to find quarter inch pieces of plywood. It was so hard to find quarter inch plywood. I actually ended up having to like splurge on really nice quarter inch plywood in order to even find plywood for this project. So I was only able to find three sheets locally. I really hope that's enough. But yeah, so I have been like thinking and planning and usually those two things mean trouble in my brain, but I think it's gonna work out today. First up though, before I get too excited about cutting the plywood though, is I definitely have to cut some baseboard molding to hang on the wall first. I think it's just gonna make for a much neater finish if I do the floor molding first. So we're gonna do that. And then I'm going to cut down these plywood sheets to hang on the walls. And I have all my tools with me in this space and my dust back with me because it's just a lot easier to do custom built-in type things when all of your tools are actually present. So yeah, I'm really excited to turn our bedroom into a workshop today. Yeah, that being said, let's get started. 
So this is kind of just like a design choice thing on my end, but I did decide to install some base molding before I actually started to put up the plywood boards. For me, it just felt like it made this process a lot neater and a lot easier. Once that was done though, it was time to then start cutting the plywood. I just want to put out a quick disclaimer here. I know probably watching this because I'm watching it back and I'm so sketched out by me and the fact that I'm cutting plywood on my brand new floors, but I triple and quadruple check the depth of my saw before doing this so that I did not cut into my actual floor. So I just want to let everybody know that everything was fine. Honestly, in a normal situation, I probably would not be cutting this directly on my floors, but I really did not have an option in terms of spacing and shop stuffs and whatever. Just trust me on this one, okay? Anyway, so I used a circular saw with a straight edge track to cut down all of my pieces. You do not need a track for this, but a circular saw definitely comes in handy for a project such as this one. Once I ripped everything into the same width, I then made some cross cuts to cut all of these pieces into varying different heights because I wanted the wall to look a little random-ish. You'll see in a little bit. In terms of planning, I actually did a lot of pre-measuring for this project to make sure I knew exactly how wide my boards needed to be and I needed half inch spacers in between each one so I decided to make a template. You ready for a super fancy woodworking trick? I knew that I wanted half inch spacers in between each one of these boards so I literally took two of the quarter inch scraps that I just cut off of those boards, taped them together and now I have the perfect spacer for in between my boards. Now that's using your brain. Sort of, that was actually really simple, but I think it should work. I think this should work. Famous last words, right? So I actually mapped out the entire layout for this wall on SketchUp before starting this project. So I knew that I'd have to start with a spacer directly in the center of the wall to begin. I'm calling myself out on this before, <laughs> before anybody calls me out on this in the comment section, I'm gonna fall over. There's an empty box here. This had an old telephone line in it. It's not hooked up anymore. We're not using it. No one's using it. I actually had it like double, triple checked. My basement's unfinished. I went, I yanked the wire out of this box, disconnected it completely. But really, if I were to supposed to be doing this properly, be, I'd have to, not have to, but I should be closing this hole in the wall now that there's nothing in this box. But I really wanna get this project done, so I am gonna cover it with plywood. So please don't call me out for it in the comments. Much love. Thanks, friends. <laughs> Not gonna lie, day one was kind of a fail because it was too dark to see anything, so I did wait until the next day to make some heavy progress. Oh my god. This lighting is so much better. I was getting so frustrated yesterday because it was so gloomy. I don't even have to have the upper lights on today. No headache. Stop. Sunshine. What's to complain about? Let's get started. With a fresh day, a fresh cup of coffee, and a fresh mindset, I was able to get a significant amount of progress done on this wall the next day. So one little trick that I ended up doing before hanging some of these boards was measuring exactly where my outlets were and then I cut around them using my multi-tool. I definitely made sure to shut off all of the electric from the box to the bedroom before doing any work in or around these outlets. I also upgraded all of my outlets and had to add spacers so that they would stick out of the wall far enough in order to put covers on. I got all excited, I just realized I messed up. Good thing I caught it now. This one should be tall. That one should be short. Good thing I caught it now, huh? Accidents happen, that's okay. So one thing you can do with a project like this is add some adhesive to the back of the boards. I actually opted not to do this because if I ever decide to change this wall in the future, I don't wanna have to completely redo this wall and have to like scrape off any adhesive. Instead, I just used brad nails and that worked out really well. All right, friends, I know that the lighting is atrocious right now on this camera. I'm really starting to think about my options for lighting in this bedroom, but I really wanna get some wood putty. Uh, I can't even see it, it's so dark. I really wanna get some wood putty into all of the nail holes tonight so that this dries overnight so that tomorrow I can 
jump right on in with sanding and finishing this wall. Yeah. So I'm gonna do this and then I'm gonna eat dinner and then I think I'm gonna try to sleep tonight and then I'll be back in the morning to finish this up. Right, cool. After filling all of the holes, I let it dry overnight and then the next day I came back, sanded down the entire wall and prepped it for stain. All right, as a mad chemist, I couldn't decide what color or shade I wanted. So this was too dark, this was too light. So I decided to make a custom color that's right in between using an entire can of this color in the golden oak and half the can of this color in summer oak. So let's get this color on the wall. I'm really excited about it. So in terms of tackling the staining portion of this project, I did decide in the moment to brush on the stain because I didn't want to get any stain on that blue paint in between each one of the boards. But honestly, this legit took such a long time. And in hindsight, I totally wish that I pre-stained the pieces before hanging them using my Flexio paint sprayer. Since it does come with a fine tip sprayer for stain, you'll actually see how I used that very shortly. But yeah, you live and you learn, right? After letting that stain dry though, it was time to switch on over to my Wagner Flexio once again, this time using the detail finish nozzle for fine finishes. I also opted for a matte finish, which was the same sheen as my wall color. So everything blended so beautifully and evenly once it was finished and it just looked so professional. Honestly, I was able to get this entire wall coated with two coats of finish in about five minutes. I really honestly am so stoked at how much time using this sprayer saved me on this project and in this bedroom. Once that wall was dried, I then decided to get super detail oriented and I painted all of the trim in this bright white color and also went on into the crevices in between the plywood as well. Oh man, don't judge me. I'm the one that's looking at it every single day. I feel a lot better. <laughs> that made me feel so much better. So while there is still so much to do in this bedroom makeover, I am very happy with the way that this accent wall turned out. And between this and the new color in the room, it completely feels like a different space and I cannot wait to keep making it feel like our own little oasis. Okay, friends, end of project check in. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Okay, so I'm so happy with the way that this accent wall turned out. I will admit though, it does look a little strange without any furniture against it. This is actually gonna be the wall that goes behind our bed in our main bedroom, but because we moved here from the studio, we don't really have a proper bed because you know, studios function as like, your bedroom, but then your bedroom's also your living room, which is also your kitchen and your dining room. The good news though, is that I did order a bed and it will be coming eventually. So there's that. That being said though, I am going to be stepping away from this main bedroom project for a little bit because there is a ton of stuff happening all over the house. If you can't tell by how chaotic all of the projects on my channel have been, I mean like I literally still have to do like the living room and the kitchen and like work in the backyard. So there's just a lot happening. And right now this bedroom is not really our priority because we are pretty comfortably set up in the guest room upstairs, which you can also check out on my channel. Shameless plug. But I will admit it was really nice to kind of step away from like the gigantic home renovation projects for a little bit to work on a super easy woodworking project. So I do hope that you all liked this project and like the change of pace a little bit because we're gonna be hopping right on back into home renovation after this for a while. Speaking of hopping on into home renovations, classic segue. There are gonna be a ton of projects coming up on my channel very soon. Like I'm gonna be flooding you all with projects. So definitely make sure to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and click that notification bell. There is so much fun stuff coming up on the channel that I cannot wait to share with all of you. But yeah, talking about all that fun stuff, I have so many projects to do. In fact, I'm gonna get off camera and go work on another project as we speak. So I'm gonna go do that. Before I do, I do just wanna say thank you all so much for your support and your patience and your love and your encouragement. Renovating this house and turning it into our home has honestly been the biggest project I've ever actually taken on. And every single step of the way has been so rewarding. And I'm so grateful that I get to make so many dreams come true in my own house. Anyway, I'm gonna get emotional. So I'm gonna go work on some more projects. I will see you all very soon with a new project, but until then friends, happy DIYing.